sometimes you're about to go into a war in kvk and you need to scrape together enough commander sculptures to fill in a slot in your army and i'm sure plenty of you have been in that position where you don't have enough commander sculptures to just go out and expertise a new commander so in today's video we're going to be going over the best budget build commanders for every troop type in rise of kingdoms and in particular we're going to be focusing on commanders that thrive as five 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 one or five five one five configuration and for those of you that are new to the game what i mean by that is the skills in order would be five 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 one or five five one five right because a skill at max has five points in it historically saladin is a great example of a five 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 one commander i was lucky enough to get a couple of extra sculptures to make them five 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 two and similarly commanders like nebu and gorgo also thrive at five five one five now the reason that this is such a viable configuration both five 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 one and five five one five is because if you guys didn't know it takes 690 legendary commander sculptures to expertise a legendary commander but if you only want to max three of the four skills then it costs 380 legendary commander sculptures so it's almost half the cost if you just want to ignore one of the skills entirely and the benefit of this furthermore is that even if you ignore that skill and just simply unlock it you still get the benefit of that skill right so if we take my thutmos for example the fourth skill here is only at one point which means i haven't spent any commander sculptures to upgrade this skill however just by unlocking it i'm still gonna take four percent less counter attack damage and when i'm hit with a basic attack i still have a 10 chance to deal direct damage to the attacker just by unlocking it right so by spending 380 legendary commander sculptures you're spending about half the cost of an expertise commander but you can get way more than half the value of the commander and in many cases you can get 80 or 90 percent of the effectiveness of that commander just by spending 380 sculptures and so that's what we're gonna cover in today's video so that way you know which commanders right now are the best budget friendly commanders in the game but first what's going on guys cheers okay now let's start with archers and archers have famously gotten a very good 5551 legendary recently and that is Herman Prime. Everybody knows that the fourth skill here is okay. The expertise is okay, but really a majority of Herman Prime's value comes from the first three skills. The active skill is what's spreading the poison and dealing a lot of the damage. The second skill is giving you a bunch of the stats that you really want. Attack, defense, and march speed for archers is great all in one skill. And then the third skill is gonna give you 20% more AOE skill damage. And this instant proc defense reduction is really nice as well this defense reduction when using an active skill is really nice as well so for 380 legendary commander sculptures if you need a great secondary for your archers and honestly herman can even be used as a primary with some pairings he's probably the best budget build commander for archers right now and i say that because the second commander we're going to talk about is yuge leung and he is also great i would aim for a 5515 with yuge leung if you were going to go this route the reason that i say herman prime is is a better budget build than Zhuge Liang is because really Zhuge Liang you want to probably expertise him right he's got a good expertise there's a lot to love about how he works on all of his skills all of his skills are great so really you don't want to stop at the budget build with Zhuge Liang but if you again are about to go into a battle or a fight in KVK and you don't have enough commander sculptures to max him out you can go for that 5515 and really I probably wouldn't spend any skill resets on him because again you're gonna eventually expertise him but the second skill just by unlocking it gives you a little bit of extra skill damage and some instant proc archer attack but really the fourth skill is I mean this is just gonna double the amount of damage factor that you're gonna do with this three target marquee effect hit and also it goes from two to ten percent bonus damage really like the fourth skill here again these are both good skills so if you get like five five three three for example that's fine as well so he can be used budget build you just shouldn't probably stop there before before Herman Prime came out, we would say that Boudicca was probably the best budget build archer for the open field. The fourth skill here is just doubling the healing factor from unlocking it to finishing it, and you get a little bit more damage to infantry, but that's 
that's really it and then the expertise here it's 10 percent more damage i'm pretty sure we've confirmed that this is not all damage i'm almost positive that this is normal attack and counter attack damage also you know when you're inflicted with a control effect you can negate it but we're seeing i would say less guan use over time which was the primary control effect that you wanted to get rid of this is silence and disarm right so i mean and really like before we used to pair Boudica prime with art amnesia and she had her own self silence and this would get rid of it but people aren't really doing that anymore it's just such a slow pairing so you don't really need this fourth skill five 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 one you've got a great budget build really I would stray away from Boudica prime at this point she's still great she's got a great single target hit and a great debuff on that hit lots of stats here a little bit conditional unfortunately a little bit of March speed I want a little bit more than that these days but at the end of the day she is only a single target damage commander so at this point I feel like she is a bit power crept at least for archers because archers just have so much AOE that it's like why would you run Boudica right and that kind of brings me to my next point which is Nebu we talked about Nebu earlier and you know you might be saying well Omniarch Nebu is like super old and, and like we have Ashurbanipal in the game at this point right and that's true but I feel like a lot of people are using Nebu over Boudica Prime in some instances because first of all he has AOE so he's going to be dealing more damage on average with the active skill second of all he has defense all the time it's not conditional like we see on the second skill from Boudica her defense is conditional which is very annoying I kind of wish her attack was conditional but whatever also so his defense is there all the time but also he's faster than Boudica Prime as well and finally the fourth skill here gives you 15 percent more damage and you have a chance to reduce the target's rage so a really strong debuff there honestly so 5515 is a great budget build for Nebu the downside compared to Boudica Prime is that you can guaranteed get a 5551 whereas you can't guaranteed get a 5515 so you probably would have to use some skill resets here probably not the place that I would use skill resets because he is so old but it is worth noting that I feel like I'm seeing more Nebus than I am Boudica Primes these days but that's just my anecdotal observation and again you know if we talk about Ashurbanipal which should be down here somewhere the downside with Ashurbanipal is that there's some nice things spread across the last two skills but they also are kind of tied in with rally attacks and the rally attack stats here you kind of want the expertise on Ashurbanipal if you're going to run him in the open field it just kind of is what it is unfortunately so Ashurbanipal doesn't really get the same treatment as Nebu if you have enough sculptures to expertise one definitely go Ashurbanipal over Nebu but if you don't have enough sculptures and you want a budget build I would say go for Nebu and that's going to do it for archers next let's move on to cavalry cavalry are in a really interesting spot I would say we can start with Huo Huo is one of those commanders where I mean you like all the skills right you like all the skills if you can I would try to do a 5515 I like the fact that the third skill lowers your rage requirement but it's only for the first 15 seconds of battle again the same thing with the skill damage bonus it's only for the first 15 seconds of battle after that it's just 10 percent normal damage which really isn't great I would rather have the constant and if he's not expertise it's a constant 30 percent defense 20 percent skill damage and a healing factor whenever you defeat an enemy really in PvP you're not going to get the healing factor very much but the 20 percent skill damage 30 percent defense is great to have consistently whereas the third skill here is only for 15 seconds then you lose it so a 5515 would be ideal but again you know you probably don't want to use a skill reset on Huo because at some point you might expertise him or I know some people like to get 555 five whoa and just not click the expertise button so that way you don't get this like autumn wind effect whenever you defeat an enemy right so there's that but you know even if you got like a five five three three again that would be fine you would still be lowering your rage requirement a little bit and you'd still have a pretty decent fourth skill there so Huo can be used as a budget build but he is one of those commanders that you probably want to expertise him eventually anyway next up is Joan of Arc Prime and historically she's always been a great commander as a budget friendly option the downside is that again it's five five one five is what you're looking for with Joan of Arc Prime so skipping over that third skill is going to be a little bit hard and honestly she probably is a commander I would use my skill resets on because the third skill really isn't good at all like this is quite a bad skill honestly and the other skills are very good attack March speed all good things a little bit of normal damage but the fourth skill you definitely want maxed right and so 
what you really want to look for is a five five one five here you really don't even need to expertise her ever like you could just leave her there forever she is basically a permanent budget build there's no reason to get this expertise it is not worth it i shouldn't have done it i didn't need to do it but yeah all of her value is in the first second and third skill here it's just constantly popping the active skill double procking at every other skill cycle getting the bonus here and getting the attack of march speed and that's pretty much all you need from joan she's good to go ironically we still can talk about william william is probably the oldest commander we're going to talk about in this video and he still shines in the open field it's crazy his active skill is a little bit weak at this point it's only three targets as opposed to nebu's five targets and it's a weird like rectangle shaped area but it's still a decent debuff here with the march speed and they can't benefit from skill damage you still get a lot of attack nice march speed nice bonus damage outside of territory the third skill is great even before the expertise and the fourth skill just by unlocking it you're gonna get 10 percent defense if you hit one target and you're still gonna get the 50 rage per second for three seconds if you hit multiple targets right like 95 percent of the value of this skill is unlocked just when you get it just by obtaining that skill right so five five one for william you can leave it there it's fine i like it there's really no reason to expertise him i did it just because i had sculptures laying around and i I wanted to squeeze every last ounce of value out of him but really 5551 William is a great budget build still to this day near the end of 2024 and the final commander I guess we can talk about is Belisarius Prime and the thing with Belisarius Prime is that he really is one of those commanders where like the expertise is so good that this is really what you want from him can you use him as a budget build I guess but not really right like if you wanted to do a 5551 you could because this fourth skill says that you take you know 10% on the skill damage that's nothing crazy and if you're attacking another troop and the target has less than 80 percent units remaining 30 percent bonus skill damage is nice but this is conditional on the enemy's troops remaining so you don't really have any control over this sometimes you're not going to be hitting an enemy with less than 80 percent and you just won't get any value out of the second part of the skill whereas the third skill is always active all the time you'll always have that 25 percent defense no matter who you're hitting and you'll always have that 10 percent chance of 500 direct damage it's an instant proc so it's nice and of course the second skill is attack and march speed these are great things right so a 5551 five, Abelisarius gets you his single target hit and debuff and all the stats from the second and third skills and you're missing a little bit on the on the fourth skill and you're missing the expertise which is the main thing with him but you could technically use him as a budget build if you do plan on expertising him eventually but you want to use him right now before he's expertised I would go for a 5551 five, and then finish him off later but I do want to remind you guys that this is really like a whale's toy right this is a commander made for people that are swarming things down at least that's what I've seen anecdotally so I probably wouldn't go for the Belisarius Prime investment as a free to play player or a low spender or something like that. But you know, if there, if this is a commander that you like, I know some people who invested in this commander just because they like Belisarius as a historical figure. That's great. Go for it. Next, let's move on to infantry. And infantry is also in a weird spot because they actually have so many good commanders, but they kind of all want to be expertise. I mean, that kind of like we can talk about Liu Che, right? Like Liu Che is great as a five 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 one. You don't really need this last skill here here but I mean the expertise is so good it's so good it's extra damage and it is extra rage it's an extra turns worth of rage which is like th this is like a built-in horn of fury except I feel like it's better because you're dealing damage as well right like this is one of the best expertises in the expertises expertise this is one of the best expert <laughs> in the game because it is just so good so again 5551 five, you could do it but why would you go for the expertise here next let's talk about William Wallace you could totally use William Wallace as a budget build I don't know if you would do 5515 or 5551 I would argue a 5515 is better and here's why the bonus 40 percent is nice here but because it has a 10 second cooldown it's only going to work on one of your two commanders in their skill cycle and if you're using William Wallace that means you're probably pairing him with Liu Che and if you're pairing him with Liu Che then that means that really this fourth skill would give you 20 percent bonus damage to both of their active skills right so 20 percent for William Wallace 20 percent for Liu Che whereas this would give you 40 percent for just one of them and it's only an 80 percent chance by the way which means effectively this is a 32 percent bonus to that damage so I don't I don't love the third skill it's like a, it's worded a little weird I kind of would just rather get the flat 20 percent damage on the fourth skill right it's 10 percent smite damage so that's exclusively for the active skills and then the 10 percent normal damage is also going to apply to the active skills but it's also going to increase your white numbers by 10 percent really you know if you want to play it safe go for the 5551 five, or I mean you could just split the difference and just you know see how the skills land 5533 five, three, three, whatever it's fine you'll be golden either way but I feel like you 
don't really need this expertise the expertise here it's nice right because there are so many slowdown effects in the game and it is pretty supportive to give mighty shields to your allies but the thing about that is it feels like it's two seconds right it's two seconds it's a thousand mighty shielding factor it's nothing crazy it's 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 just fine so you could totally use William Wallace without expertising him I think that would be good next let's talk about CPO Prime my opinion on CPO Prime has changed significantly over the years I originally thought that he needed to be expertised because all of his skills were so good and that's still true if you can expertise him I would but now that Guan Yu is getting older and older although truthfully I've been saying that for like two years now and I still use Guan CPO and it still performs really well and now Guan has a relic and it's like is Guan ever going to die probably not I mean maybe probably right probably eventually but we'll see we'll see with Ragnar Prime but anyway if you're not going to pair your CPO with Guan Yu which a lot of new players don't because you have to get Guan as a 5155 which is very hard to obtain it's really not worth it and you know you definitely don't need the expertise on Guan so getting a bad configuration on him is, is awful but regardless if you're not going to pair CPO Prime with Guan Yu then you really don't need the expertise here right it's 10 percent more skill damage yeah and you know the target's probably not going to be silenced if you're hitting them with you know without Guan Yu so a 5551 would actually be really good for CPO Prime why is that well you get the active skill tons of damage nice debuff second skill tons of attack and March speed third skill 20 percent health and an instant proc 500 damage to the target and it's every second for three seconds it's actually really good 1500 damage factor to one target so really a lot of the values in these three skills the fourth skill you have a 50 percent chance of reducing skill damage which means if you take smite damage this won't do anything and it's a really tiny shield for three allies 500 damage factor so like this fourth skill has gotten worse over time right as we've seen more smite damage come into the game this is just not as good it's just it's just not and you know moving forward if we see more combo attack damage if we see more true damage like with the new archers this skill just gets worse and worse because there's fewer things dealing skill damage right so 5551 as a CPO prime budget build I think is great I really think if you're not gonna pair him with Guan Yu you just leave him at 5551 and you're still gonna get some value here right you're still gonna get 250 damage factor shields and you're still gonna reduce skill damage by 10 percent half the time so I mean it's still something it's still nice and I guess the last commander we can talk about but I wouldn't really do it is Gorgo ever since William Wallace came into the game I feel like Gorgo doesn't really need to be used in the field if you're you know a whale and you're running three infantry armies out in the field you might be running Gorgo but most players if you're running one or two infantry armies there's really no need for Gorgo anymore like William Wallace takes her place you run Guan CPO and you run William Wallace with Liu Che or you run Liu Che with Alexander the Great and you're good to go you don't need Gorgo but if you wanted a budget build Gorgo you could do a 5515 and that would make her open field viable she'll be very slow but she will hit very hard and it will be kind of hard to swarm her down or I should say it won't be hard to swarm her down but it will be punishing but really uh, this is just technically a good budget build in practice I probably wouldn't do it again at this point there's just better options for infantry and my Gorgo just sits on the bench and she's 5551 and finally let's talk about engineering because every time I make a video like this I always get at least a couple of people they're probably viewers of Mr. Siege okay oh but they say on oh, you didn't cover ranged and really it's like the, the reason for that I think is because there's only four of them <laughs> right and if you are investing in ranged you're probably a pretty sophisticated player already I would say it's not that many I mean, maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm wrong but like it's probably not that many new players that are investing in ranged and I'm also positive that you can't even use ranged in the first two kvks and pre kvk right I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory but I'm going to cover it here anyway just so the way I cover all my bases okay Okay, first of all, Cordoba. This is obviously the best ranged commander in the game right now. Who knows what the next cycle will bring? But Cordoba at a 5551 would be a great budget build. You get the damage from the first skill. You get a lot of the stats from the second skill and the march speed. Third skill gives you defense and the stacks here, which is nice for the disarm. And then the fourth skill, it's range counterattack damage reduction. And whenever you're hit with a basic attack, you have a 10% chance to gain normal damage, range normal damage, I should say. But you're probably not going to be hit by basic attacks, right? Because you're going to be in the back doing your thing. And like, you know, would it be nice extra? I'm sure but for a budget build like 5551 I think would be fine next I would talk about Gajamata 5515 I would say is probably a good budget build for him his active skill is going to deal the ranged smite damage over time for the next five seconds and you get ranged normal damage the second skill is going to give you March speed and a ton of health which is going to be really tanky historically like maybe you wouldn't want health as much on ranged as you would on other things because ideally like 
you're not going to hopefully need it. Second skill gives you some healing factor, but you get half the value here just by unlocking it and you deal more range damage. And then the fourth skill, this is where all of your siege attack comes from. So that's nice. Plus you get a defense reduction here. Now it's a 10 second cooldown, unfortunately, but I, I like this. I like a five, five, one, five. And really if you got like a five, five, three, three or something like that, like a, a weird configuration, it's fine because you're still gaining the bonus range normal damage here, right? Like 15% would be good, especially because you're going to pair this with Cordoba and you know, he would want that because he also deals that range normal damage or the smite damage, I should say. So yeah, if you get this skill higher, that's fine as well. Five, 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 one, if you really wanted, you could do that. But like, I just feel like you want this attack to deal as much damage at range as possible. That's what I would go for. And then really like we can talk about Margaret, but like her budget build is five, five, one, one. Like, honestly, you could say, oh yeah, five, five, one, five, but it's like, I feel like it's not even like, yeah, that would be great, but you still get a lot of value out of this fourth skill just by unlocking it. So if you're going to do like a budget build, I would do five, five, one, one Margaret. And then like a five, 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 one Cordoba, that would be the cheapest budget build. The best budget build would probably be again, five, 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 one Cordoba with Gaja Mata again, five, five, one, five or five, five, three, three, or however it breaks down. But like the cheapest five, five, one, one Margaret would be fine. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully you found it useful and you learned a little bit more about the best budget builds for some of these commanders in rise of kingdoms. If you want me to make a follow-up video, just talking exclusively about five, five, one, one commanders, which is even cheaper. It's 190 legendary commander sculptures. I think it's kind of aged poorly. I think five, five, one, one. I think those days are really like they're really limited. You would only use that in an emergency. You have to fight in KVK with it. But if you want a video talking about five, five, one, one, I can make a video follow up to this one. The only way I'm going to do that though, is if you drop a thumbs up on this video and let me know in the comment section below that, that, that you want that video. Otherwise this is going to be it. And while you're down there, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video. And as you can see behind me, the shelves are empty, which means this might be the last video you ever see in this room. Actually, there's, there's one other video that I might post later that is in this room possibly. But besides that, this is my last, my last video here. So at least it's the last one I'm recording that as you guys know, I'm moving the end of the month right now. It is the 27th of September. If the content upload schedule is a little bit weird for the next few days, it's because I'm like literally breaking down my entire setup, moving to a new apartment. And if you you want an apartment tour there also let me know in the comment section below anyway guys with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace